Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan and welcome to Academy of Mind. Today, I'm going to show you how to adjust some general settings in the LMS, like translating your site's language and changing the time zone. The LMS general settings will affect every single learner, admin, and any other user logged into the platform. For example, if you change the site language, this is going to change the LMS language for all current and future learners logged into the platform. In the general settings of Academy of Mind, you can also make changes to the landing pages. Now, if you're not familiar with the landing pages, customers typically use landing pages to sell their training courses. These are fully customizable uh, public facing pages that anybody can find online. If you were selling continuing education courses, people could find you on Google and look at the different courses you have for sale. And essentially they're landing pages that are fully customizable that people can view without actually being logged into your LMS. Typically they're used for e-commerce and if you want to learn more about LMS landing pages, click on the video on the screen. And other than language translations and changing the time zone, in this video we're also going to talk about changing your administrator email address for email notifications, changing your LMS date format, updating your privacy policy, and more. So the first thing you need to do is obviously log into the LMS. This is uh, me, I'm logging in right now and I'm using single sign-on so I just have to click an email uh, instead of you know signing on manually and you can set up single sign-on. There's videos on this channel if you have not yet done that. So once you're in the LMS and the admin dashboard, you wanna look to your left-hand side and on the navigation bar, go all the way to the bottom, go to settings and then general. And this is where we're about to do everything. To change the site language, all you have to do in the general settings is pick another language on the dropdown. Currently, we only offer English, Spanish, French, and a custom English if you wanted to change some verbiage of the English, English language. That said, we do offer custom language translations for companies. So if you need your site to be translated to another language, definitely let us know. All right, so back to the language translation. All you have to do is click your preferred language in the dropdown and then save settings and you will immediately see your whole platform has been translated. And as you can see, it's not just on the admin dashboard, but if we go here under the student view, um, although if you can't speak Spanish, you won't understand. When you do a translation, even if you're just testing, just ensure that you know where the buttons are to revert the translation and so forth. But once we're in here at the admin dashboard, as you can see, when we switch to the student view, the translation affects students as well. And just as I mentioned before, language translations affect every single user in the LMS. The next thing we're gonna change is the site title. Now the site title, we just have it as our company name and that's probably the best thing for you guys to do too. This is going to affect the site title appears on e-commerce invoices and orders that customers see when they purchase training from you, as well as uh, emails that are triggered from different actions in the LMS, uh, your site title appears on there. So we're not actually gonna change the site title, but if you wanna change the site title, you can right over here. And just save the settings when you're done like everything else. All right, so the next thing in the general settings that you can change is the administrator email. And the main thing that this is going to affect is your automated emails going out to uh, learners and anyone just being notified by emails in the LMS. So as you can see, if we go into users, uh, I just created this email. I'm going to blur out all these, or I just created this user is what I mean. Uh, on the screen that you're seeing, I'm blurring out these emails because some of these are, you know, for instance, this is my personal email. I don't want you sending me emails. But as you can see, there's an email notification that goes out when you create users, a new user in the LMS. And so I created this new user. And as you can see, here is the email notification. A new account has been created for you on Academy of Mine. And you can see this is the administrator email that I got the uh, email from. So if you wanted to change the administrator email, it's simple, just like everything else. Come in here, change it, click save settings. That's it. All right, the next setting we're gonna change in general settings is time zone. Now this time zone will display across your platform and will affect the timestamp for a bunch of different things, including student progress, student activity, certificate issue date, orders and reports. 
And really the thing that comes to top of mind with time zone two is if you're doing instructor led training, you know, hosting a class on zoom at 3 PM on Saturdays or Microsoft teams and whatever the time is, especially if you're working with learners in different time zones, it's important to have a standardized time zone. And just with the other settings, if you wanted to change the time zone, all you have to do is click a different time zone in the drop down and click save. The next settings we're going to adjust are really simple. They have to do with timestamps as well. So there's time format and date format. And just as an, an example of where these would be displayed, if you have an e-commerce invoice, as you can see, you have the date displayed right here with this format. And in this case, the time format is a 24 hour time format versus the typical 12 hour time format. Obviously this is also affected by the time zone that we just were adjusting. Um, but if you wanted to change the time format from a 12 hour to a 24, you know, just like the other settings, you just change that here in the drop down. And with the date format, you have the, these different options. So next I'll show you that we have this option called private site. I'm not going to go in depth on this because there is a video on this channel where you can, you can see exactly how you could use the private site and what it does. But essentially when you toggle private site on, it makes it so nobody can access your front end landing pages and public LMS site other than users logged in. So currently as an admin, obviously we're logged into this LMS. If you're a student that's logged in, then you're seeing this viewpoint. But if you log out of the LMS, this is the front end page, right? We're not logged in. This is typically, like I was saying earlier in the video, where people would, where, where customers are selling their training, selling their courses. Now, if my site was private, if I had private toggled on, then I would not even be able to access this course catalog and the rest of this LMS and these front landing pages without logging into the platform. All right, one of the last things you can customize in general site settings is called site page identifications. Now, before we even jump into this, and I'm not going to go extremely in depth on this uh, because this has to do with page building um, on, on your front end landing pages. And if you do want to learn more about that, click on the video on the screen. But essentially on the front end of your LMS, you have four main pages. You have a home page which is the initial home page with probably the most information on your site. Then you have a product catalog page, which is where your different uh, courses in our case are displayed for sale. Then you have the cart page, which is the shopping cart. Once people add uh, training to the cart and then when you click proceed to checkout, you have the checkout page. These are the four main pages by default your LMS is going to have. And if you go into the page and menu builder, you can see that these are, these are the different pages, home page, product listing, which is pointing to the catalog page I just showed you. And of course there's extra pages we've created like a contact us and about us page. Now, not to confuse you, but you can create new pages and fully customize these pages, but coming back into the general settings, what the site page identifications does, is it allows you to designate what page is which, right? So if just to mess things up, so you understand what I'm saying, I told you before we created extra pages. By default, there's only these four pages that you technically need inside of your LMS. But let's point the home page to the contact us page and see what happens. Save settings. Now, as you can see, when we come here, it's thinking the home page is the contact us page. So essentially, and as you can see, if we revert this back to what it's supposed to be, the home page pointing to the home page that we've created, you save settings. As you can see, if we come back here to the same thing and refresh it, we're going to be brought to the proper home page. So the site page identification lets you choose the designation or the destination, sorry, of each of these pages. And all you have to do to change these, like I just did is click the drop down and then click save. But if you want to learn more about the page builder and building and customizing pages and menus, I have a video that I'll put on the screen right now. Again, last but not least, we're going to go over privacy policy in terms of conditions, customize your privacy policy in terms of conditions in general settings. These drop down menus 
will show where the private policy is pointing to the same way that these uh, site page identifications, each one drop down is sort of the designation of where the page is. It's the exact same thing with terms and conditions. So if you don't have a terms and conditions and privacy policy, you're gonna go ahead and wanna create the page. As you can see for these pages, it's as super simple. It's just the text, a row, a single column row with the text module. And for this, we're just doing a test and we just have privacy policy. And you can preview that. And of course, you can also save this as a template if you wanna do something similar or you know do something similar for your terms and conditions. But basically, you take the title of your privacy policy page that you've created. You don't have to copy and paste the page, but just remember what your page is titled and for the privacy policy, attach privacy policy, do the same thing with the terms page if you haven't created one. And you can customize exactly what the terms and conditions text says, as well as what your privacy policy text says. And every time someone is registering for training, uh, for instance, after they buy a training, after they buy a course or get access to a, a virtual class, they're going to have to sign up to get inside the LMS. And uh, on the registration page, you're going to have the privacy policy text, as well as the website terms, which they have to check and fill out all this stuff to create an account. And those pages, those site page designations, if I control click these so they open in new tabs, you can see that they take learners to the designated, you know, pages. So, alrighty, that's all we got for you today, folks. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. As always, if you enjoyed this, especially if you're a customer of ours, please subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and for any future topics you'd like me to cover or anything I missed in this video that you'd like me to cover in a future video, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And if it makes sense, we'll definitely uh, create that video. And, and you know, you never know. Some of the questions you have, we might already have videos and documentation that I'd love to point you in the right direction and help you out there. So thanks again. See you next time.